So today is Family Worship Day. And so to acknowledge that and just take a few moments to share about the love of Christ, I want to ask that any kids that would like to come up and sit with me right here, you can come up. That's, of course, up to you and your parents. But if you'd like to come up, come sit. So come on up. Come on up. We're going to gather right here. I'm going to sit on the stairs. And I want you to sit on the floor, please. There you go. Right there. Perfect. And parents and uh, friends and aunts and uncles, the church family, I'm going to talk to them, but as a result, this is really a message we all need to see and understand. But I hope that you, as we talk, that you can uh, glean a few things as well. We've been talking from the book of John, all right? So John was one of Jesus' uh, disciples. In fact, John thought he was the most beloved or loved disciple that any of the other disciples. He said that several times in his book. And John had something he wanted us to know. So he wrote all these things down in the book of John, and he told us at the very end what he, why he did it. He said, I want you, I'm writing all these things down so that you will know and believe that Jesus is really who he said he was. And so John wanted us to know that. He wanted you to know that. He wanted me to know that. And he showed us that in the first chapter of John. And he says these words. I, I want you to see what he said. This is uh, on the screen as well, so uh, you can follow along with me. It says, John chapter 1, verse 14 the Word, and that was John's special way of talking about Jesus, right? Uh, in this chapter, he says, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed His glory, the glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified, that means he just he made, he, he shared his testimony. He talked to, it, talked to people all about it. This was John the Baptist. He testified concerning Him and exclaimed, this was the one of whom I said, the one coming after me is bigger than me. He ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. Indeed, we've all received grace upon grace from his fullness. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the one and only Son, who is himself God and is at the Father's side. <coughs> Excuse me. And has revealed himself to him. All right? So, what we see in this passage are three things. Okay? Say three things. Say it three things. Three things. Say it louder. Three, three things. things. Say it one more time as loud as you can. Three, three things. things. John tells us three things about the love of Christmas, the love of Jesus. Okay? Number one, he tells us that the love of Christmas came to live among us or to dwell among us. Now that word dwell is maybe one that you don't talk about a lot, but it just means to live with. Now I, I, I need someone to help me and I've already, just, I've already chosen them, so don't raise your hand. But it's my wife, Miss Allison, would you come? And she didn't know this, so she might be mad, but it's okay, because it's gonna be sweet. All right, so come sit with me if you would for just a moment, then you can go back. So, this is Miss Allison. She's my wife. She and I met, uh, we met 17 years ago. Well, no, 18 years ago. Wait. Yeah. 18 years ago. We got engaged 17 years ago. We just celebrated our engagement just a few days ago. So, 17 years ago, I asked Miss Allison to be my wife, right? Now, we got engaged on December 15th, 2006. We got married just six months later in June, June uh, 30th, 2007. Now, what, could you imagine that if I asked Miss Allison, we went to see the Nutcracker, we went to this restaurant, it was a sweet moment. Um, I, I surprised her then, just like I surprised her now. She didn't know I was going to do it. And um, so I surprised her, and... She said yes, so that's good. Spoiler alert, she's here uh, 18 or 17 years later, and she said yes. But could you imagine that if I asked Miss Allison to marry me, and we came to the church on June 30th, 
and got married and we said our vows and uh, I sang a song to her that I wrote. I know, so sweet, all right? And we did all that and then, did somebody say ooh? No? And what if we went and we got married, we said our I do's, we kissed on the stage and all that and, sh and then we went, I went to my house and she went to her house. Would that be weird? Yeah. Right, because when you get married, and only once you get married, all right, only once you get married, you live together. You show your love towards someone by dwelling with them, by living with them. So me and, Al me and Miss Allison got married, and guess what? We went on a honeymoon, and then we came, and we had a house, and we made it our own, and we lived together. So I say all that because Jesus loves us, right? Right? Yes. Right? Say, Jesus loves us. Jesus loves us. Say it loud. Jesus, Jesus loves us. us. All right. And he loves us. And just like I wanted to be Miss Allison's husband and live my life with her, Jesus says, I want to be your Savior. And he came and he lives with us. He came to earth as the flesh, as John said. The Word became flesh and lived among us, dwelt among us. So the love of Christmas loves us so much, he wants to live with us. He wants to show us his love by dwelling with us and living with us. And you and I can dwell with him or live with him by showing him that we accept his love and receive his love and we give him love back. So that means that you and I, we trust Jesus with our life. We say, Jesus, I'm a sinner, I need to be saved. I want to love you just like you've loved me, and I want to be your child and dwell with you and live with you always. And every single one of us can make that decision. But we have to make that decision. It's not just something that just we, we, just, it just, we do what we want and you know, Jesus is going to love us. No, he wants us to exclaim that, just like I did on that stage many years ago when I read my vows to Miss Alice, when I wrote a special song that talked about our love. So would you all thank Miss Alice? She's a great helper. You can go back to your seat if you want, or you can stay if you want to. It's up to you. All right, she's going to stay. I mean, she really loves me. All right. Good. Now, so that was number one. Say number one. Number one. The love of Jesus, the love of Christmas dwells with us. Number two, the love of Jesus, love of Christmas is made clear in Jesus' coming. The love of Jesus, the love of Christmas is made clear in Jesus' coming. So John tells us a few things. He says, Jesus came and he says, you used to have this one thing called the law and now you have Jesus. So Jesus comes and fulfills this law. Now it says the law of Moses. The law of Moses was something that the Israelites followed with their whole life. They had to keep all these rules, all right? And they followed these rules with their whole life and so they followed this law to see God, to accept God, to love God, to show that love to him. But the problem is, is that law was incomplete. Say incomplete. Incomplete. It wasn't everything that they needed. It, they, were, they needed more. Now, there's a story in a book called The Pilgrim's Progress. It was written, written a long time ago by a, name, a guy named John Bunyan. And in there, he gives us this illustration of what the law does and what God's love and Jesus' grace and the gospel does. And, um, and I, let's see, I need uh, Bennett. Would you help me? All right. So y'all stay there. Bennett's going to come up here and help me. I've got another illustration. All right. So what is in here? Rocks and it's kind of dust and dirt, right? Dirt and dust, all right? Um, it's in a Chick-fil-A cup. Why not, you know, Jesus, um, you know, Chick-fil-A, they're synonymous. Okay, so what happens if I place, and I'm going to, I'm going to place this dirt on the ground, all right? And this is like the law, all right? I'm the pastor here, so I'll clean that up and I'll be okay. It'll be all right. All right, so, but... Bennett, I want you to help me understand. So this dirt, can you all see that? So stand up if you need to see it. It's kind of tough to see, and then you can go back to your seat, all right? Or back to the floor. So make sure you can see the, the dirt. All right. So 
In this Pilgrim's Progress story, uh, it, we, we see that the dust in this room and the dirt in this room is the law, okay? The law is, and the room is our heart and our soul, and the dust needs to be cleaned up. But if we clean it up just as it is, it's going to stir up more dust, isn't it? See, why don't, why don't you kind of sweep that up a little bit for me? And uh, so it's kind of hard to see, but it, like if you sweep it up, it's, it just makes it more dusty, all right? It's kind of hard. It, it has dirt and dust kind of going everywhere. And in that story, there was this room filled with dust. It hadn't been dusted in a long, long time. And this dust kind of went up in the air, pillowed up in the air, and it just got the room even more. It was hard to breathe and all that kind of stuff. So the person in the story tells us there's a way to calm the dust down. Remember, the dust represents the law of Moses. So if we, if we try to clean up our lives by doing just a bunch of good stuff all the time, is that enough? No, because it's just going to get more dirty. It's just going to stir up more dust. So what he said is that if you pour a little water on it, just a little bit, again, I'm going to clean this up. It'll be okay. Nobody... Nobody come get me. All right. It's going to be easier to sweep up. So, Bennett, will you kind of sweep that up and see if that's a little bit easier to sweep up? Now, it's going to be, it's wet, so it's not quite. But the, pro, the thing is that the dust is not going to pillow up into the air, right? It's going to be something we can clean up, right? And get it into a pile. It gets a little bit easier, right? Yeah. The water does a good job of kind of keeping that dust down. And what the story tells us is that the, the water is like Jesus. When His grace and His goodness and His gospel comes into our lives, when we accept Him, it allows our lives to be cleaned up. He cleans our lives up. All right, so back to your seat on the floor. Thanks. Give Bennett a hand. He did a good job. Thank you, sir, for your help. So in this story, it's talking about the difference between the law and Jesus. And Jesus makes things clear, makes the coming, uh, uh, the joy of Christmas is, or the love of Christmas is made clear in Jesus' coming. Jesus does what being a good person couldn't do, following all the rules couldn't do. Only Jesus could come and forgive and say, what was that? Right, yeah, Jesus came and did what we need, not what we could do on our own. So, you can't, you and I can't be good enough, but because Jesus came, He is good for us. He does all the things we couldn't do, and so our lives can be made clean, not because of our efforts, but because of what Jesus does in our life. So when we receive Jesus into our life and we ask him to save us, he cleans up, cleanses us from our sins. I have one final point. So that was number two. Number three. Say number three. Number three. The love of Christmas helps us see God. The love of Christmas helps us see God. All right. Clara, I have, uh, I have something. I wonder if you would be willing to put these on. Can you stand right here and put these on for me? You and I have a problem that we need to be fixed in our life, don't we? What is that problem, boys and girls, that only Jesus can fix? Our sins, absolutely. Our sins, right? So it's like these awesome shades. Will you just kind of turn so everyone can see you there? All right? Yes? These awesome shades. And uh, when Jesus comes in our life, see, they're kind of dark. It's kind of hard to see, isn't it? They're kind of like shades. You know, they're hard to see. You don't see the light as well. And I mean, that's what they're for. They block all that. But in our lives, we have sin in our life, and it keeps us from being able to see God. We might can see everything else just fine, but it keeps us from being able to see who God is. And when Jesus comes in our lives, he cleans our lives up and just holds still there right? And then all of a sudden, 
we can see, whoops, here, let me clean them and I'll put them back on. All right, that we can see better. All right, look at that. They're nice and clean. Here you go. And he cleans our lives up when we ask him to forgive us of our sins so that we, number one, are clean, but also that we can see who God is. We can see him afresh. And really, what Jesus really does is he just takes our need for glasses all together and gives us perfect new sight. And when he gives us new sight and forgiveness of our sins, we are able to see God. That's what John says. He says, Jesus came, the word came and dwelled among us so that God could be revealed to you and I. Would y'all give Clara a hand? She did an awesome job. So here's the thing, all right? The love of Christmas comes and Jesus comes so he wants to live with us. He wants to make it clear that we need him, that we can't clean up our own lives on our own. And when he does clean our lives up, when we ask him to be our savior, when Jesus, when the love of Jesus is accepted in our lives, he cleans us up, he makes us brand new, and then he wipes away everything in our eyes and helps us be able to see and know who God is. Isn't that awesome news? Isn't that awesome great news that we can see God? Hey, don't you think so, that that's great news? Here's what I want to ask you to do. Y'all did so good. Would y'all stand and go back to your parents? Go back to your seat. We're going to close this out real quick. Good job, everyone. We'll move that later. Here's, here's, here's what I think we all need to see. I know, that, I know that this message today is simple, but it's really profound. It's really this most simple message, but the most important message for you and I to not only see and understand and hear, but it calls for a response. Just like you and I can't clean up our lives on our own. Just like the, the illustration represented. We need to re rely on Jesus. We need to put our trust in Him. The love is revealed. The love of Christmas is revealed to you. Jesus has been revealed. But will you respond? Will you see it? Will you look to Christ? It's a message simple enough, I pray, for a, a child to understand, but profound enough that it will change your life if you'll just respond. So as we sing, I want to encourage you to respond, to receive the love of Jesus today. Let's pray. God, help us to receive the love of Jesus today, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Would you stand? Let's sing and you respond to the Lord today.